Hey everybody, Eckers here. Welcome to American Truck Simulator. So, I went ahead and started this job. Well, I didn't start it, but I, I selected this job from Fresno to Los Angeles to deliver some furniture. Um, we have 10 hours, well, almost almost 11 hours, and it's uh, $2,700. I thought it would be kind of cool to go to L.A. since we haven't been there yet. But, um, plus it came with a green truck as part of the job, so I had to go with that because green's my favorite color. But, um... Yeah, I went ahead and uh, jumped in here, was about to get started, and I realized that my steering wheel wasn't set up, so I had to exit out of the game and, and hook it up and, and all that. If you guys watched my Firewatch series and you saw me spinning around in circles, uh, that was because of a conflict between uh, my keyboard mouse and my steering wheel all being plugged at the same time. So I had to remove my steering wheel for Firewatch. Anyway, forgot to put it back. And uh, Anyway, that's why you guys didn't get to see me select the job, but uh, here we are. It's nighttime, and... Uh, Fire up the truck here, get going, and uh, make sure our turn signals work. I actually switched um, from simple automatic to uh, sequential for my gearbox. I don't have the uh, stick shifter here. I have it in storage in my in our storage unit, but um, I don't have it here. It's just it, I have a rounded. Uh, my desk is a quarter desk, and it has like a rounded uh, uh, corner here, sort of like a concave corner. So it really wouldn't fit well because um, it's not a straight edge. So anyway, my steering wheel does okay. It clips on all right, but uh, anything more than that wouldn't. Um, all right, another. Someone made it left in the comments. You, you know, for simulation, you should turn your mirrors off and use your actual mirror. So I'm gonna do that because one of my things that I like to do is I actually like to try to stay in first person as much as possible, even if it means taking a long, long time to park. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get rid of that just for for simulation purposes here. So there we go. First gear. Got to remember to shift gears now. And uh, with 18 gears, they they sneak up on you pretty quick. So hopefully the uh, little tiny click there isn't bothering you guys too much. But it's uh, my paddle shifter on my steering wheel is what you guys are hearing. So a whole 23 miles an hour, and we've gone through like eight gears. So every couple miles an hour you have to just shift, but that's all right. That's all right. Man, it's, it's kind of neat at night. I like. I've always liked the night driving in this. And then you throw in some rain and all that. It's pretty cool. But uh, man, today I, I did a lot of Firewatch gameplay. Oh man, that stopped like really fast. I think maybe my park, my uh, brake hadn't been calibrated properly there. You know how you normally have to push it in and release it, push it in and release it a couple times, so that it gets used to the uh, the travel distance. I, I think maybe that was part of my problem. There we go, first gear. All right, I got a green light. I don't know why I'm sitting here. Now I'm going on to yellow. I'm gonna have to get used to shifting again while I'm talking. I used to do it all the time. I used to run around all the time shifting gears, but uh, I'm out of practice, so you guys will have to just bear with me here as I get back in the swing of things. <laughs> as this truck passes me, he's like, sucka. Get out of here, I got some pipe delay. So, all right, show off. Oh, he's not haul hauling anything, so that doesn't even count. But, uh, yeah, today, uh, after doing a lot of uh, Firewatch gaming last night, I, I woke up with a sort of a rude awakening. I had about another hour, hour and a half to sleep. My wife, the, the door burst open, my wife's like, I need you right now. And it, like, panicked. I'm like, oh, my God, what has happened? I'm thinking ER visit for one of the kids. So I go out, and as I'm looking down the hallway, I can kind of see that it's really bright out in the... Uh, in the in the living room area and uh, which probably was more um, due to the fact that we have a huge amount of snow, well not a huge amount but we got a solid amount of snow out front so it's reflecting all the sunlight and uh, anyway anyway uh, but what my first thought was the door was open and I was like oh no our uh, two and a half month old has gotten out and we don't know where she's at or something even though we have uh, the security latches like hotel rooms have on the on the door so she can't because she can actually unlock the deadbolt and actually exit the door now so we have those security latch this bars that go across it only partially open the door but i thought maybe my wife had forgotten to latch it or something which isn't like her she's very uh, fat uh 
fastidious about that sort of thing, but um, anyway, I'm like, oh no, something happened. And then I'm going past the bathroom, and it's like it's wet, like the carpet's wet on the front of the bathroom. I'm like, oh no. I look in there, and she's got like towels wrapped around the uh, the hot water faucet because it's it's a uh, it's a uh, oh shoot, I probably look in my mirrors before I start just cutting people off, especially when I have the duty to yield there. But uh, she's uh, she's basically trying to uh, uh, tourniquet <laughs> with some bath towels the uh, hot water handle the faucet well what happened is uh my daughter had uh was just turning on the faucet just like oh man wow i got a lot of gears to go through and um the i guess just from general use the uh the handle just broke off so there's like no handle which was causing it to just basically be a geyser and uh anyway there's a nice about half inch worth of water on the floor there in the bathroom and uh, she's like I don't know where the uh, how to shut off the water I don't know where the main is so I run I run I mean I I, I, know I wear con contacts too so I had to like run into my bedroom grab my contacts put those in as quick as possible luckily they both went in on the first try and um, stumble back into this utility room that we have uh, get in behind a panel and, and turn it off and um Unfortunately, it was the hot water, so while I did turn off the waters coming into the house, there was still hot water in the hot water heater, uh, which was working A-OK. -okay. So, um, anyway, that, that kept kind of, I kept having to uh, dump water as, uh, as we uh, tried to work and repair the sink uh, from that. I, I unhooked the uh, line going up into the handle and uh, over to the faucet, and I had it just going into a, a pitcher that we had, and uh, we were dumping that. And then I had to run down to the hardware store, which luckily isn't too far away. It's only like you know five minutes away, and uh, buy a new faucet. So, but uh, yeah, it wasn't the little one's fault or anything like that. She didn't get yelled at. I mean, we're pretty good about that. I mean, if, she, if it's an honest uh, mistake or something like that, or she did never has been told not to do something and she does it, then we don't yell at her for that. We tell her, no, you're not supposed to do that in the future. And then, you know, if she does, then we say, hey, you know, just cut it out sort of thing. But uh, yeah, I think she was scared enough just from it breaking off in her hand and, and it shooting up. And um, luckily nobody was burned or anything like that. But it, I, I got the new faucet, came home, uh, <laughs> Basically changed this to shorts and a short sleeve shirt and decided we've already used up all of our towels and we were going down to clean sheets and stuff like that trying to sop up uh, some of the uh, some of the water that was uh, that was pulling around the sink and I uh, just jumped in there got soaked and uh, I don't know I'd say probably about you know 30 40 minutes 45 minutes later we had it or I had it all uh, I had a new fa new uh, faucet hooked up. And, all was good and everything was right as rain, but that's a heck of a way to wake up, man, out of a dead sleep. Oh, are you kidding me? I thought he passed me. I thought I was safe. Man, they don't really give you, uh, what is it, nine you're fine, ten you're mine sort of thing. For me, it's like 15 or, or you have to be going over 15, and, and I'll only cite then um, up to 20 if you've had a prior in the last, in the last year. So... <laughs> Over 20, it doesn't matter, man. You're getting a, you're getting a citation. But uh, anything like from 11 to 15, I might blink my lights at you. Or if I think that it's w worth stopping you, if maybe I see something else that sort of perks my uh, or piques my interest, and I'll stop and just do a warning. Or if it's been a really slow day and I'm just haven't done anything else at all, I might just stop because I'm I don't know I'm lonely. I guess <laughs> I don't know. Oh no, not another one. Better slow down. I'm only going one over. Are you going to give me a ticket? Considering everyone else is going faster than me. No, they let me slide with one one mile over. But uh, so yeah, that was the start of my day, man. But it all worked out good, and it always feels good to be faced with a challenge like that and be able to overcome it, and conquer it. It's sort of empowering, you know. And I'm not really super handy or anything like that when it comes to uh now grifter he's a he's a beast oh well geez carve me up why don't you
but uh, he's a beast when it comes to mechanical stuff. Just general, uh, you know, handyman know-how type things. Uh, so anyway, I, I don't know. I kind of sat down. I'm like, well, I could do Kona. I could do uh, The Long Dark. I could do uh, Firewatch. Or I could do American Truck Simulator. And my hands just reached down and picked up the wheel and started hooking it into the uh, desk. Sort of un involuntarily. So, I don't know. I just kind of wanted to cruise with you guys. Uh, you guys seem to like the... Um, hey, Grifter, speaking of... <laughs> playing a time waster game there yeah he's got to have gazillions of dollars by now I see him starting that up every night before he goes to bed but um, yeah so it seems like you guys uh, do like the uh, oh, I should have I should have looked I didn't even look I didn't get my uh, track IR going I'm uh, you know what after this episode I'm just gonna go ahead and bite the bullet and just place the uh, order for the new uh, track clip or whatever it's called pro the, the one that actually is this the one I get off on this is like spaghetti up in here I think so yep looks like it all right but uh, I uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and get it so I can start using my track IR5 I got it sitting here and it'd be so nice to use it as I mean this game's like tailor-made for it it's perfect this is exactly what you're supposed to be using it for so make these make these uh, merge is uh, a lot easier oh boy I'm trying to think what I should uh, talk about well, I, 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 I talked to you guys about the trooper at the academy I think if not I'll have to talk about it in the next episode about the guy who said that every time he pulls somebody over he saves a life oh now he's playing Fallout 4 look at that so he's got that playing in the background now he's going to go off and kill some raiders. Good luck to you, brother. That's a good game. I really like Fallout 4. I just don't have time for it now. I mean, it's just so busy. I guess I should shift gears. I thought I was kind of maxed out, but geez, 43 miles an hour is horrible. Maybe I'm a little gun-shy from uh, being popped for going five over to the limit. I mean, my gosh, man. I think I'd laugh him off the side of the road if he tried to do that to me in real life. It's ridiculous. Alright, here we go. Los Angeles. Alright. Whoa, that stop sign's coming up quick. Alright, so we got the stop sign both ways. Oh, good thing I looked that way. Convertible. Mustang. Uh-oh. Sorry, buddy. I know you had the right away, but I couldn't see you for that silly fence. Thanks for stopping, though. U-Haul truck there. I don't know what they called it. Another call box. That's funny. Uh, somebody else left in the comments of, uh, I think it was the first video. Yeah, I'm noticing lots of sign errors, like, uh, roadway, like, inconsistencies with how it really is. I'm telling you. You'd think that they just, like, I, I tell you what, I'd volunteer it. They could just ask me, is this what happens, or is this what happens? What, what do you think? Um, I'd be more than happy to give them advice on how to how to make things look uh, legit when it comes to uh, traffic uh, signage. Alright, so we made it. I wonder what kind of thief you are today. All these guys out here are thieves, I'm telling you. Alright, let's see what we got. We got. Oh, it's only 40. It's probably not going to be that tough. Of course, I always say that, and it's like way tougher than I ever expect. So here we go. Alright, straight ahead. I already this I selected. Okay, it just took a second to update the uh, GPS there, I guess. All right, so let's see how much room we're dealing with it. It always looks like you have more room on the map than you actually do. 
It's on the f oh, don't be between the trailers. Alright, where's it at? It is back here, isn't it? I selected it, didn't I? Well, where am I supposed to park it at? Oh no, apparently I selected... Apparently I didn't select it. Okay. Oh, I guess I gotta actually shift into reverse. I was trying to use my... I was trying to use my, uh... You know what? Uh, probably be easier just to reverse it the whole way back, back I think. Not quite anything over there, am I? Nope. I guess I passed it without actually confirming it. Okay, so we're just gonna head back to the green, little green box here real quick. How am I doing on set? Oh yeah, we're good. We're maxed out at six mile an hour. Got my eye on you, sucker. I see you. I'm watching you. I see you. This one's trying to look innocent over here. Alright. Okay. Apparently I didn't actually confirm it. I thought I did. Oh, I think I hit... Oh, I hit the X, didn't I? Alright. Yeah, there we go. Sorry about that. Apologies. Come on, I'm selecting my gears. Oh man, I can't even drive back there. Oh, this doesn't look bad at all. Actually, there's somebody. There, oh, he's skateboarding. You see that? I was like, what the heck's going on? A dude's hopping the fence. Nothing but a bunch of thieves around here. All right, let's try not to get too crazy here. All right. Feeling I was gonna hit that that shrub. All right, let's try straighten it out here. Give myself a little bit more room. I guess it's daylight now. That's plenty of room. Oh, I thought they wanted it in the bay next to it. No. <laughs> That's my excuse, right? That's pretty horrible. Horrible parking job so far. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Right. It's going to be tougher now, because uh, I'm not actually lined up to see it. Okay. I should be able to slide it in here. Power through it here. Come on, you know that's in there. All right, let's go forward. That's not how you park a truck. <laughs> that's like a horrible, horrible job. Okay, now we got it. We should get it now. We got it? No. Man, I'm pretty darn... Well, I thought I was pretty straight in there, but apparently not. I guess this is what I get for not using the extra camera angles. Boy, I thought this was going to be a lot easier than what it actually turned out to be. Don't care. Still says I did excellent. I'm still a newbie. Obviously. Obviously.
All right. So no matter how good the, the drive goes, you, the last thing you remember is the parking job. So it looked hideous there, didn't it? All right. I say we do. Uh, let's say we do one more. Yeah. Let's do it. Twenty minutes, and yeah, we can do that. I know these episodes are going a little bit long, but I kind of just like like uh, cruising. So, oh, that's a big one right there. Let's. Do, oh, that's a. Where are we going to? Redding, California. Let's do that. That's a long haul right there. I wish it showed that the total miles though. I don't see that anywhere. I mean, I guess you could calculate it. You could like divide twelve. You could uh, divide the total amount by the by the dollar per mile and, and figure it out. But uh, I don't really want to do the math in my head. Oh man, that is like a crappy truck too. Look at that. Oh, you have a sleeper in it. Let's do it. Trying to get, trying to get my first, uh, first truck. That'll be a nice one. What am I hauling? I don't know. Something, something in a cylinder. I don't know if it's explosive or not. Is that Parker Center? No, that's we're in Fresno. Never mind. I'm getting my cities mixed up. I'm almost to the point where I just skip two gears. Seems like it works a little bit better. Yeah, I think I might do that. Henceforth. Okay, there. Yeah, we're doing all right. Oh yeah. The thump, the thump, the thump. No construction site is complete without some of those. I think I am going to just start skipping, going two gears at a time. All right. So another thing that I've heard is that you can't make a right on uh, on red. Um, can't speak to traffic or like truck traffic laws because I don't really. I mean. We're in a small village, not on the interstate or, <coughs> or anything like that, so we don't get a lot of trucks. And um, they wouldn't be really turning off any of our streets to the right to go into any residential areas anyway. Oh, shoot, I missed my turn. Ooh. Kind of want to just... Yeah, watch this. I'll try this at home, people. Is that a cop? Oh, that is a cop. Hopefully he's... Uh, like a, a veteran who doesn't care. <laughs> okay. Breaking the law. Breaking the law. <laughs> Alright. What can I say? It felt good. It felt good. I get it. I get it. It feels good. Alright. Um. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I think you can still make right turns on red, even if you're in an 18-wheeler. Right? Or, I should say correct. There's a, oh, there's another... It says stop sign at the stop sign at the lights. But um, yeah, so I guess you can get ticketed for making a right turn on red. They need to fix that. I know it's not a European thing, or if it is, I, I think from what I remember on Top Gear, it originated in the United States because they're saying like, I remember UK Top Gear said, uh, you know, basically. About the only thing U.S. ever gave us for uh, for the motoring world was a no or a right turn on red. So, hey, if Jeremy Clarkson and James May said it, it must be true. And hamster can't can't leave him out. So what's the deal? I, I heard that they're going to uh, Amazon to uh, for their new show. All three of them. So they're going there to team up and do sort of like a mo motoring show, sort of like Top Gear. Except they're going to do it for Amazon. Have you guys heard any news on that? Um, it'd be good. I mean, they need to stick together. Their person, their personalities are just perfect for one another. They really play off each other well. So yeah, if you guys have heard what's going on with those three, the trio from Top Gear, the original Top Gear. 
let me know in the comments because I'm, I'm a little curious. I have Amazon Prime now. I just I had Netflix forever, and then I finally got Amazon Prime, and uh, now I'm a little curious. It's like, oh yeah, that's, gotta keep my eye out for that. Right now I'm in the Vikings. Actually, it's a pretty good show. I'm second season. I think I'm about four or five episodes into the second season. Speaking of shows, one thing that kind of I thought was funny since we're here in California was uh, Sons of Anarchy, man. The, the habitual use of motorcycle helmets in that show just kind of cracked me up because they're supposed to be like this outlaw motorcycle gang. I mean, they went so far as to put on helmets just after they had a shootout with a, like a, I don't know, it was like either the Bloods or the Crips. It was some sort of a, a black street gang. And they were on some docks and they had a shootout with them. And the other the other gang, not the motorcycle gang, but the Bloods or the Crips, like, took off in their cars or whatever they were on. I think it was cars. And uh, the, after the shootout, and, and they gave chase. So the motorcycle gang gives chase. The Sons of Anarchy gives chase. But, like, they put on their motorcycle helmets first before they had this rolling shootout with them. Like, as if a cop really cares. Like, yeah, you were... I saw you shooting it out with them and all that, but dude, you were not wearing your motorcycle helmet. Seriously. Helmets save lives, man. Come on. I know. He's going to have to wait his turn. Little, little courtesy there, brother. Afford me the courtesy I did not afford you. How about that? But, uh, I, that's the one thing about that show I thought was kind of funny. Oh, another thing that I thought was so funny was how all the motorcycle gangs... Oh, come on. How all the motorcycle gangs uh, were sort of like very politically correct when it came to racial diversity. I'm like, you realize that these motorcycle gangs are pretty much the most racist groups of people you could possibly ever meet. Short of an actual, you know, hate group. Um, <laughs> a racial hate group like the KKK or the National Alliance. Short of that, outlaw motorcycle gangs are about as racist as they come. It's, it's, they do have their exceptions. It's very rare, though. They're typically lily white men. Anyway, but I thought it was kind of funny. They always have like this one odd black or Hispanic or Orient, you know, like Asian or something like that. Uh, name your minority group. They'd have like one of those thrown in there occasionally. Just trying to think what else I've noticed. I've had some little little things here and there that I've noticed that are sort of oh, I think uh, was it I'm trying to remember what video I, I think it was the first video. Someone left a message saying you being a cop, what do you think about marijuana laws? Uh, actually, I'm all for it. So, I used to just be for medical marijuana. Um, I was kind of like, yeah, I kind of see that and all that. But then um, I saw this video, and a guy made a very incredibly, he made it incredibly logical points. Son of a, I'm going broke here. <sighs> I wasn't going that fast, really, was I? What, 60, probably 60 again. I got a downshift, just so I can't go any faster. What's my max with, what, eighth gear? Yeah, it keeps me under the speed limit, but I'm, I'm like six under. I can't do that. I can't go that slow. But um, it's called, um, I think the video is called uh, Retired Police Captain Demolishes the War on Drugs. Like, I think that's the title of the video. And, uh, yeah, he, he absolutely does. Once I watched that video, not only was I in favor of legalizing marijuana, but I was actually in favor of legalizing all drugs. And the reason is that, not that I'm for drugs by any means. I'm about as straight edge as they come. I mean, I don't, I don't drink, uh, hardly at all. Like maybe once or twice a year I might have 
whatever happens to be being served at a certain event. Um, and I don't smoke. And I don't use drugs. So, uh, anyway, I'm pretty straight edge, but it's not from, it's not because I want drugs to be legal. It's because, oh, son of a gun. Oh, oh my God. I guess this is payback for that U-turn that I made earlier. That's exactly what it is. This is karma. Coming back, this is like traffic karma. But, um, yeah, I'm not for legalizing drugs. Um, as far as, as far as just because I want it to be used because I think they're a good idea. I think they're a horrible idea. But what what it is is it's, it by doing that you eliminate the black market for it and uh, just like you know hey I, I figure if you're against drugs you should be against alcohol and tobacco as well because they both kill people you know <laughs> so and, and I tell you I, from a cop's perspective I'd rather I'd much rather um, much rather fight oh shoot I need to get over here try not to kill anybody while I do it too this is horrible Okay, we got a green light. I'm gonna actually show this guy. That I'm, I'm coming through. Oh, wait, but, yeah. wow! I am not being very safe at all. Hey, I'm a newbie, so I have to drive like drive like one too. Um, but uh, where was I? I was. Uh, yeah, it eliminates the black market for it. I mean, and if, if you're going to be against drugs, I think you should also be... If you're going to be outspoken against uh, the current illegal drugs, you should be out there campaigning just as hard to try to get alcohol and uh, tobacco uh, outlawed. Uh, also, but you never hear anybody out there with picket signs doing that or on TV, uh, you know shouting from the roof, rooftops about that. Man, it's a short... We're gonna... Oh, come on. Please give me some room. Are you gonna actually let me... Wow, that was horrible. He should not have done that. But I'm uh, merging on the highway at like 21 miles an hour. That's brilliant. But, um... Yeah, so... Anyway, the idea is... If, if you're gonna... If you're gonna be consistently against drugs, be consistently against drugs all the way across the board. But that never happens. So, for some reason, I think alcohol and tobacco are okay, but the rest aren't. Uh, and, and, you know, I'd rather, as a police officer, I'd rather fight somebody or have to deal with somebody who was high on marijuana than I would uh, uh, who's drunk. Drunks are much more un uh, unpredictable. They're much more violent, for the most part. Occasionally, you get, like, a lovable drunk. <laughs> but people tend to get a little more uh, violent when they're drunk. As far as driving, you know, that, marijuana, all that, that would all be covered. You know, you can't be driving under any type of drugs. We already have laws on the books for that. I mean, it's it, it would still be legal, illegal to uh, drive under the influence of marijuana or any type of illicit drug, just as it is now already. People still do it, sure, but it would still be illegal, just like they do with uh, alcohol. I'm just saying be consistent across the board. And in the process, you eliminate the black market, which is where most of your violence comes from. So, your violence isn't coming from uh, somebody who goes off and gets high and ends up, uh, ends up doing something stupid, typically. Normally, it's whenever you have uh, uh, turf battles and things like that. Now, if you're saying, what about crystal methamphetamine, things like that? Well, you know, here's the thing. If you, uh, once you, once you get rid of uh, putting people in jail for just possession crimes, then you're going to have so much more jail space for people who do stupid things when they are under the influence of drugs, and you lock their butt up for a long, long time. You put them away, I mean, for a long time. And what you're doing is you're punishing the crime. You're not necessarily punishing the, the, the drug, but you're saying, hey, look, if you're going to get on crystal meth and you're going to go out there and do something stupid, because there's already people, believe me, the fact that crystal meth is illegal isn't stopping the people who are addicted to crystal meth or who want to do crystal meth from doing it. They're going to do it anyway. So, you know, make it make it all legal. Whoa, Prius. Oh, man. About turned you into a smart car there, buddy. So, that's just my two cents. And, again, I'm not articulating it nearly as well as, uh, as the, uh, the, guy, the captain, the retired captain in that video. But, uh, basically, the idea was you're not stopping it. 
the laws have never stopped uh, the level of addiction. It's always been about 1.3 percent for the entire entire um, uh, for the entire country of uh, the populace that, that are addicted to illicit, uh, to illegal drugs. All the way from like the 1800s through the prohibition, including the prohibition. Um, you know, after the prohibition, during the war on drugs, you know, it's 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 always been about 1.3 percent. So basically, it doesn't change anything. People are going to do what they want to do. But what you do is you punish the stupidity and the and the, the the acts that follow when uh, when it when it does uh, when they do something something wrong. And that's the speech. What's the speech through here? Okay, I'm safe. So yeah, that was someone asked that question. What do you think about marijuana? I think I probably surprised him with that answer. Again, I think it's stupid to ever get addicted to any type of drug. I find it, uh, I kind of look at it as, as something that's for somebody who's weak. Um, there are a few exceptions where somebody gets addicted to uh, pain meds because they're in you know they have had some sort of a major trauma to themselves and um, they get addicted to oh I need to stop at that way station I didn't I did not know that okay wow I'm losing money on this run I think oh okay but there are a few times where I have a little bit of you know understanding towards the situation and another Oh, it's another trap, speed trap there. Is he coming after me? Kind of looked like he was. I saw brake lights and I saw no tail lights at all. Like he let his foot off the brake. But uh, and another thing is when you do free up the uh, court system where they're not dealing with a bunch of possession crimes, send them with the prison system. You can really, really punish those people who are habitual, or not even habitual, but. Uh, violent, who do something violent or do something dangerous to society, uh, you can really punish them for it and uh, put them away for a long time. Um, then if you do have people who are addicted, you can also uh, spend a lot more resources and time and effort in uh, rehabilitation programs. And prison doesn't rehabilitate users, addicts doesn't. They, it's just as easy to get drugs in prison as it is outside. And just think about this, how, I mean, if you want to fight the war on drugs and you want to, um, you want to go at it, like you want to really just go at it wholeheartedly. Let's say that's, you're like, we really need to fight this war. You can, let's say you lock down society, um, to win the war. Winning the war means there's no more drugs on the street that the word heroin, cocaine has been eliminated from the dictionary, right? That's my definition. Um, so, to win the war on drugs, you'd basically have to lock down society to the point where it would be like prison. And just think about this. Even in prison, when you have all those controls in place, drugs still get in there. So, you're not going to win the war. Drugs will always be a part of society. There will always be addicts. Might as well accept it and get rid of the black market. The black market's the problem. So, anyway. Willow West is not playing the long dark. She keeps popping up just just during my videos, just so she can advertise a little. Which she should. She's got a great channel. Her and Gamer Nate. Good commentators. And it's been a while since I've thought about or, or tried to attempt to argue the, the, the reasons for complete legalization. And uh, so I'm sure that I've, I'm a little rusty, a little redundant, and probably talked in circles a little bit there. But is this a way station? Because I don't want to miss another way station. My gosh. I don't think it is. It's a Chevron station. It's supposed to be. What did they call it? It's supposed to be Chevron. A Chemron, I think is what they called it. It's <laughs> pretty good. So the, the main reason why this was delayed, the ATS was delayed for so long, I guess they had it ready to go, like, months and months ago was the licensing issues. I guess they had problems getting actual trucks licensed and they didn't want to do it the way they did with ETS where 
they had to use sort of like offshoot names, kind of like Chemron, you know, for their trucks. Um, so they were waiting and waiting, trying doing these negotiations to get truck licenses, and then they only got what Peterbilt and Kenworth. I mean, no Mack trucks, no Volvo. <laughs> they couldn't do that. They they only got Peterbilt, Peterbilt and Kenworth after all that. Oh, this is our exit. Whoa. So, International Harvester, nothing like that. Okay. So, while this game is really fun, uh, it's much more like a uh, uh, a mod than a new standalone game. And I'm a bit disappointed with their licensing efforts. If this is... I'm like thinking to myself, what have you guys been doing all this time? Seriously. I mean, apart from screwing up the stop signs. Like, you haven't been researching the actual... The way the roads are actually laid out when it comes to proper signage. So. Did I hit something there? No, I didn't. Okay. Felt like I did. I think I just uh, was in too high of a gear there. Reading has now been discovered. All right. But we have other problems in society right now that probably are going to take, especially with the political season, are going to take uh, much more focus. You know, got ISIS running around like crazy. Freaking just lopping the heads off of everybody they can find or setting them on fire. Bunch of freaking nuts. And uh, then you have uh, the national debt. Oh my god. That's, uh, that's a mess. And if we don't get that under control, that's just going to be a disaster. There has to be a tipping point. And um, I don't think any of us want to see that ever happen. So... They need to start really focusing on that. I mean, I just don't get it. Like, my household, you know, I spend. I don't spend more than what I can afford by bring, you know, bringing it in. And um, I, don't, I, I just don't get. Whoa! Oh, I knocked over it. <laughs> I knocked over a pylon. I don't get why the government has such a hard time doing that, and you know, just printing money. It's just it turns it into funny money. It's complete. It, 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 it dilutes your currency. So, that's ridiculous. Get back on the gold standard. That's what I say. Stop spending more money than you bring in. Learn to have some freaking constraint. I don't have no idea why the federal government, which isn't supposed to be that involved anyway, is so freaking bloated. Because if you think of the original intent of the federal government, it has way over that whole general welfare claws, they've bastardized that to the point where it's just uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not even close to what was originally intended I'm, also, I'm a, more of a constitu constitutionalist than anything else so you know gallon, alright I'm a constitutionalist, libertarian sort of leaning. Um, come on, let's go. I think I can. Am I dragging something or what? What's going on? There we go. I think the less government involved in my life, the better. Because believe me, ooh, this looks like this might be a tough one. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Having worked in the government, I know how horrible they do things. There's some things they do incredibly well, you know, and they're meant to do, and they're basically chartered to do, but for the most part, the government is really, really... What are you stealing? Look at him. He's yanking to something. Check it out. What are you trying to steal there, buddy? You realize now that drugs are legal, we got plenty of space in our prisons so that whatever you're stealing, you're probably going to end up catching about 10 years in prison. I hope it's worth it, brother. Alright, let's, um, I think what I need to do is actually turn around there and then back in. So, 
let's back up here. I was, I was hoping there was going to be a turnaround spot over here, but there isn't. All right, let's head on back. Yeah, I want to come in there, and then I want to have to... it in this shouldn't be this really shouldn't be bad I'm serious this time I, I'm not joking like I think I, I should get this on my first attempt oh I wanted to stop there okay there we go a little further than I expected this is that is a shiny wooden uh, trailer deck right there isn't it almost looks like it's uh, one of those fancy boats you'd find in the Hamptons or something like that. One of the wood, like, what is it, teak or something like that? No, I don't know. I'm not a wood expert. One of those ones that you're supposed to go out there and, like, oil with, like, certain rags and be all lovable with the, uh, with the wood and I think I should just swing my trailer into him and take him out. Oh, no, we, oh, we hit that Hit that divider. So, uh, I got cocky. It happens. I need to get closer, much closer to this side, I guess. There we go. I think we're clear now. There we go. I think we're clear. Whoa. Hey. Hey. Reach out and grab him. <laughs> oh, I did. I got cocky with it. Got all kinds of cocky. I think it might be easier just to mirror drive, actually, this one. Because I was getting a little disoriented with uh, where my cab was at. That's better. I thought I'd park. I was like, oh, I don't think I backed it up far enough. But. That should be perfect right there. There we go. Finally. All right. Well, for those of you still with me, like, comment, subscribe. We made it to level four. We're still a newbie, though. Oh, well. Live and learn. I'm not going to say anything more about parking. Because I always jinx myself. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, yeah, it was a good comment. It was a good question to ask. So got me to go talk for about 25, 30 minutes, something like that, about a subject I could probably or should be able to cover in about three minutes. So anyway, if I was long-winded, I apologize. But uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, one of those things that I see a inconsistency as far as uh, I see some hypocrisy in the issue. So that, it always irks me when I see hypocrisy. So... All right, y'all take care, and I'll see you in the next episode of American Truck Simulator.